Hey, Fed Heads, welcome to another episode of Cigar Chat. On, uh, we're broadcast live on Facebook.com and rebroadcast on YouTube, pod, every podcast catcher you can think of, and around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Um, like I said, I'm Trip. I'm here with my co-host, Jason. Jason, how are you doing today? Doing good. All right, and uh, we're here with a, a very special guest. I was telling our guest about it before the show. We've never, as far as I know, we've never had somebody from kind of the non-traditional side of cigars. Um, and this week we've got Fabian Ziegler from Drew Estate, who you're kind of in charge of all things uh, non-traditional at Drew Estate, right? That's right. My, I am the non-traditional expert uh, at Drew Estate. And, you know, in a sense, I'm the, I'm the one who smokes all the acids and the naturals. Well, Everyone else in the office is fighting those undercrowns and ligas. I'm happy with my box of dirt, you know. So it's all it's all good, you know. So, so, so for being your first very non-traditional show, you you know, I guess uh, uh, you you picked a very good guy. I guess not to pat myself on the back. Well, I mean, you're kind of like you're the non-traditional guy in the whole industry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. From a personality and a cigar standpoint. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Uh, you know, people pe- people have a great time. People have a good time, and 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 I, I learned very early on that you know, um, to I, I I'm not Hispanic. I don't know that much about tobacco, but I know how to have a good time and and how to create experiences, and that's that's what I thrive for in all the events that we do at Drew Estate is is give a experiential aspect of of it. Cool. Um, and before we get into like audience questions and the, the real interview, I want to say that, uh, Fabian dropped a little knowledge on us before the show. We didn't know that we were going to have some prizes to give away. Uh Um, so if you're watching live, leave a comment with a question on Facebook. Um, and you're going to win a little prize pack with that acid cutter right there. Uh, you said some hats, some ashtrays. That's right. Acid hats and acid ashtrays. Yes. A whole acid package. Awesome. And if uh, they want, and, I'll sign the hat and it'll be worth less than if there was. <laughs> so it's up that. It'll be ruined. Yes. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about before we start talking about the cigars, I'm really curious how you got involved in the cigar industry. Uh, you, you know, you're not your typical cigar rep, cigar brand owners or anything like that. So, so what well, kind of got you started? So I'm going to I'm going to answer your question in, in a sec but but I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have any idea what my first job was knowing that this what I'm doing right now is my second job? No, I have no idea. Okay, so I lived in Southern California and believe it or not, before I got into the cigar industry, I was I worked at Disneyland and I I was undercover security at Disneyland and also a uh, uh, crowd control during parades and all that stuff. So as you can see I'm I'm climbing the corporate ladder here because uh, uh, you know what does someone do after ten years at Disneyland? Of course they go into the cigar industry, right? Yeah. I mean that's it just makes sense. So it's it's the second job you've ever had. I've ever like, had, yeah, in oh, your yeah. entire life. In my whole entire life, yeah. Wow. I mean I don't I don't count babysitting my sister when I was of sixteen course, yeah. years old, uh, you know. So <laughs> so yeah, it's it's my it's my second job I ever had, and 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 the, the best way I can describe the way I you know I I literally fell into this uh and you know to make a a long story short but with a a lot of content into it um there's a gentleman that when i went to college as a freshman uh in a small little university in in orange county called chapman university uh i had a a guy my roommate was a french foreign exchange student and i speak fluent french because i was born in switzerland so we became very, very good friends, and little did I know that five years after he graduated, he would start one of the dis- distributors out on the West Coast in California called JMG International. And and he actually didn't know how to build anything, and he called me up, and he's like, hey, I need you to build a humidor in a garage. And I'm like, the hell is a humidor? You, you know, I mean, uh, 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 he's like, well, it, it has to be like a little walk-in room, kind of like a phone booth, and uh, uh, it has to be temperature controlled and humidity. I'm like, all right, well, okay, a sealed room. All right, I could build that. So I actually uh, flew up, and I built the first humidor for JMG and didn't think anything of it. I smoked a cigar with him, and I'm like, all right, that's pretty cool. All right, and then, you know, forgot all about it. Well, 
as he kept selling cigars in, in California, up and down California, uh, he found this, he found a girlfriend and they got married. And, and after two years of trying to live in Northern California and Southern California, uh, she dropped the bomb on him and said, Hey, I, I don't like California. I want to go back to France. So we're either getting divorced and you're, or you're coming with me. Well, you know, love prevails. So, so he decides to go to Paris with her and, and two weeks before he, he, uh, uh, you know, leaves, he calls me. I, I was his best friend. I was his uh, best man at, uh, at his wedding and, and he was the best man at my wedding. Um, so, you know, we were very tight and he calls me. He's like, Hey, so right now I'm the rep for Drew Estate and Zycar. Now this was in 2001. So both companies were start, were starting, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. Drew Estate first started in 99, Zycar started in around 98, 99, and, and uh, you know, very early on in, in, in stage of both companies. And and he goes, you know, I'm, I'm leaving, and I spoke to both companies, and they want they want to hire you as my replacement. Uh, you know, I'm kind of thinking to myself, all right, that's kind of weird. What what does someone who take care of, you know, crowd control or, or security at Disneyland have anything to do with selling cigars? But Hey, he's my best friend. He's not going to leave me wrong. Uh, uh, all right, I'll do it. So two days before he actually leaves, uh, uh, he, we take he, we we go in Southern California, and at the time, there was seven accounts that carried Drew Estate cigars because all there was was acid, yeah. and they had just they had just received uh, just released natural. So here, you know, we go to the seven accounts in two days, and then he goes, okay, so yeah, so you just go talk to these people. They'll buy stuff. And then you turn, you fax in the order, and then you know there you go. And and with Zycar, you just here's my cutter. You just show it to them, and, and you you call Kurt, and uh, uh, he'll he'll you know he'll take care of it. Okay, e easy enough, right? So I put in my two weeks at Disneyland, and granted, I was there for ten years. I was you know I had uh, uh, I was climb. I actually started working there when I was seventeen years old. So so I'd been there for ten years, and I'm like putting in my two weeks, and I'm, I'm excited. All right, I'm my own boss. I was an uh, independent rep. For Zycar and Drew Estate, and I get my box of Cuba Cuba, uh, uh, it, which is the most aromatic and the sweetest. And you know, I'd smoked two of those cigars in my life. Those are the only two cigars I've sm I smoked in my life up until then. So here I go, and and I'm you know he leaves, Ludo leaves, and and then I go okay. So there's got to be more than seven stores in Southern California. So I I, I open up the phone book. And I start looking and, you know, old school. And, and I, I had seen somewhere in a, in a movie back then that Tinderbox was like something big. So, so I looked in, the, in, in my phone book and Tinderbox number one happened to be in Santa Monica. Okay. So why not start there? All right. So, so I make a phone call and, and uh, uh, you know, the assistant call, uh, picks up the phone and but I, I go, hey, can, you know, this is Fabian from Drew Estate, a new up and coming company. I would like to to meet with you guys. You know, I have a great cigar. It's the best cigar in the world. This and that. Uh, 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 you know, can I have 15, 20 minutes? And uh, he passes on the message. And yes, so I have a mess. I have a, I have a meeting with Ed Copeland, Mister Tinderbox, the guy who started Tinderbox, in two days. So my. I, I, I get my, my suit jacket, you know, I wore a tie once and, and I show up and go to the store and, and Mr. Copeland, how you doing? My name is Fabian. And you know, Mr. Copeland's like, Oh, how you doing son? And I'm like, Mr. Copeland and with my box of cigars and I opened it up right in his face. Cigars ever. Mr. Copeland like slams that, that cigar box on, on me and goes, uh, son, we don't want any of your stinky cigars in here. <laughs> I'm like, stinky cigars? I mean, these are the best. I mean, smell this. This is awesome. This is like flowery, botanical, you know, plus they're very sweet. Uh, he's like, son, that those aren't cigars. Those are not cigars. We don't want that in your in your in, in my humidor. And and I made the biggest mistake ever by say by, you know, of course I didn't know the industry. I didn't know the, what I had. And I'm like, Mr. Copeland, aren't all cigars like this? And he had this the <laughs> biggest grin on his face, and he goes, he goes, listen, you're obviously brand new. You don't know what you're talking about. Learn a little bit about the industry. Learn a little bit about your cigars. And a week from today, so next, the following Thursday, we can sit down. I'll buy you coffee, and you could, you know, we'll start over. I'm like, Mr. Copeland, thank you very much. Deal. 
So I, as you can see, I kind of uh, uh, got thrown into the wolves because my best friend Ludo didn't tell me that acid cigars were very different than every cigar <laughs> in the industry. So that's literally how I started uh, in the industry. Now, with, with that said, I, I quickly knew that, you know, the tobacco taxes were, were in the 70s, 70% uh, mm -hmm. back then. And now, actually, funny enough, it's gone full circle because they're back in the 70s in California right now. But but I was going around and, and I, ran, I I was in the stores and I was I was making friends and I was kind of like killing him with kindness and and my way of of getting cigars in the store was okay I tell you what um, how about you bring them in and in you know when you get them you call me and then I'll come in and I'll work your humidor and I'll talk to your customers and this and that whatever so so I was not only selling them into the store but I was selling them out of the inventory of the store. And, and at a particular time, I was doing like 12 to 15 events. And then we, well, I started actually focusing on events. And I was doing 12 to 15 events when Drew Estate was doing 15 events a year or 15 events yeah. a month. So, so, in, so, you know, in 2001, when I first started, in 2006, uh, um, the guys at Drew Estate, Mike Salucci and Marvin Samuel, uh, uh, contacted me because I was an ind independent rep. They asked me, like, hey. Uh, you, you guys are you're doing phenomenal on the West Coast, and I'm like, really? Because my numbers keep going up like four or five percent. But what I didn't know was all the big catalog houses were selling the crap out of our cigars mail order to to uh, uh, all the you know everyone in in, in California. So so <laughs> you know I wasn't getting any of the rewards, but but the company was, and and w which was fine. And they asked me like, hey, we we want you to start going around and teaching all our reps to do events. And in 2000, in April 2006, that's where I, I got hired by Drew Estate fully, and I've been, you know, traveling for them uh, 15, 20 days a month since then. So that's that's the long, that's the uh, the short, the short story of how I got into this industry. And so, what were you doing when you first started at Drew Estate? You were just training reps. I, well, so when I first started with Drew Estate, I was still the, the rep for California, and then okay. I was. I was going around uh, traveling with all the other reps. We had seven reps, seven different other territories at the time, and I was doing events with them. Uh, you know, uh, we had we were starting to launch Chateau Real, so so we're mm -hmm. still very heavily based on. We had you know acid, natural, and ambrosia, uh, and at the at the time, we, uh, Kahlua was kicking butt for for general. So so I was I was going out there kind of. Ta uh, teaching the reps how to sell non-traditional cigars because the way you sell a non-traditional cigar is very different than the way you sell a traditional cigar. You, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, not only are you are you talking to someone who maybe have never smoked a cigar uh, um, and they want to try one, uh, uh, but maybe you're also talking to someone who's been smoking ten to fifteen years and you're you're asking them to jump off a bridge and try something because. <laughs> You take your whole cigar knowledge and you throw it out the window and you light up your first acid. Yeah, it's it's a it's a completely different animal from yeah. kind of traditional cigars. Yep. So that brings me into kind of my next question, which is, uh, can you just give us a very brief overview of all the brands on the uh, on the non traditional side of the house for Drew Estate, uh, just for you know any any listeners who aren't familiar with that side of things. All right. Well, so our biggest brand at Drew Estate is Acid. Um, Acid is Nicaraguan tobacco. It's premium Nicaraguan tobacco. It's the same tobacco that Pepin uses, Padron uses. I mean, it's grade A Nicaraguan tobacco, and we infuse them with natural botanical and herbal oils. Depending on what color of the band is de depends on the natural botanical or herbal, herbal oils. And there's even one that has kind of like a black and white uh, yin-yang symbol, which is the Acid One, which is infused with a, Nic a blend of Nicaraguan sangria in Central American wines. So, so, so the acid line is, is very, very big. Um, our second brand uh, is Tobacco Especial. And Tobacco Tabac Especial is also an infused brand. It, but instead of infusing the same premium Nicaraguan tobacco with botanical and herbal oils, we infuse it with Nicaraguan coffee. Now, Tobacco Especial has two blends or, or, or two types in a sense. It has a Connecticut shade wrapper, which is Tabac Especial Dulce, which is just very mild, very smooth, very creamy, uh, and very sweet. 
or you have the the tobacco special negra which is the one with the maduro wrapper with a dark wrapper which is for me the best way i could describe that it's like smoking an espresso and and what i mean mm-hmm. by that what i mean by that is for all you guys out there who smoke or drink espressos you know that your initial taste of the espresso is sweet that foam is sweet but when you actually get down to the uh, actual coffee part it's it's strong that bitter coffee flavor well, well, the tobacco special negra, you get a little dab of sweetness up front, but as you smoke, the, you, you get more of that Nicaraguan spice from the tobacco and, and a very rich coffee flavor through your nose. So, so that's, so those, are, those are the and two. I, I know that it's a store exclusive, um, but anybody who's interested in tobacco special has to try the red eye. The red eye is so good. Yeah. The red, <laughs> it's got the red that eyes- extra Lajero kick. The the red eye the red eye truly is like an espresso. It's a, it's like a triple triple shot espresso. I mean, it, it has an extra leaf of of lajero in the filler, uh, um, but you get that real rich Nicaraguan tobacco with the co- the coffee flavor is more through the nose and 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 yeah. less through the mouth. So so you know, I mean, if you're smoking one of those things in a room with like eighteen other dudes smoking something else, you're not necessarily going to get it get that aura of coffee as much. But if you're smoking it on your patio or you know wherever with another guy where you're smoking the same cigar, you'll you'll get a real rich uh, uh, nose flavor, especially when you smoke it in a very humid area. Because when you smoke in a very humid area, the the smoke when you blow it out dissipates very slowly. So mm-hmm. so so you get more of that coffee aroma around you. Um, last last but not least, as far as infusion is ambrosia. Now ambrosia is kind of like. Uh, um, it, it, the same infusion as as both, but it's with spices. So spices from all over the world. Now, now if you know people like cloves, cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, it, that type of stuff. There's there's one in the Ambrosia line called the Triple Corona, which is actually infused with spiced rums. I, I've been asking where those spiced rums are from, and and I every time I go down there to to, to the factory, I get a different country. So. Yeah. I'll just say spiced rums, okay? Uh, 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 that's the triple corona. But but if you're interested in finding the ambrosias, it's you you, you kind of have to be like Indiana Jones because it's one of our lesser selling brands. I, I didn't still, know they still made any of them. Oh yeah, we still we still make them. Uh, um, it's just a treasure, you, it's treasure finder. You have to fi- you have to find them. You know. So so that's that's it for the infusion. But that's not it for the non traditional. And what I mean by that is uh, another brand is called Natural, which it used to be called natural. Now we're changing everything to Laratan. Um, for those of you guys who have mirrors, you just you know put natural backwards, and there you go. It's it's Laratan. So we're doing that. It's kind of like a preemptive strike because of the FDA. We're seeing the uh, the writing on the wall. You know they're they're going after the cigarette companies not not being able to use the name natural. Um, the last yeah, thing want, eventually that's coming for us. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean and we didn't want to get caught with you know a ton of natural bands or boxes. So, so whatever we're using, we're using what we have now, and and now as we run out, we're starting. You'll start seeing Laratan stuff, but the blends are are exactly the same. And what the blends are, it's the blending of aromatic tobaccos. Now you have one leaf of Nicaraguan in the filler with aromatic tobaccos, tobaccos that if they would be cured another six months to a year, would then be found in aromatic pipe tobaccos. Um, so, so, the, so the sweetness and the flavor from the naturals and also the cigar that you're smoking there, the fat bottom Betty, which is a side note of the naturals. There you go. That Dead, Deadwood Deadwood's in the house. Yeah. Uh, um, the, the flavor is actually from the tobacco. It's not infused or anything like that. So, so it's, that's very different that just like for those, for those of you out there who smoke pipe tobacco. The flavor and the smell, what you taste in your mouth and what you smell through your nose are going to be two different things. And it's the combination of the two that gives you the, 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 you know, the, the natural, the Laritan uh, aura of it. And mm-hmm. last but not least, an, an, another cigar that came out four years ago was the Kentucky Fire Cured. And that is the, the last non-traditional cigar that we have out there. Now, Kentucky Fire Cured is, is Nicaraguan-based with a leaf of, of Kentucky Fire Cured. And also on the head of the cigar, uh, they add another piece of fire cured on there. So you get that smokiness, that peatiness, uh, that oaky, woodsy, woodsy flavor from, from that, not only on the saliva and on the head of the cigar, but as you're smoking it. And, and what I tell everybody when I'm in stores that, that want to try a, a fire cured, 
first of all, you have to be like, you know, you, you have to like bourbon or, or scotch or whiskey or have that some sort of palate to comprehend that because it is yeah. very smoky, you know, uh, um, just like acid is completely different. Uh, uh, fire cured is just completely different also. Now, it's not like we're not reinventing the wheel because fire cured tobacco has been used for years for you know decades for centuries in in pipe tobacco we we're just the first ones to to use it into cigars um and and the the rule of thumb is is every single fire cured has one leaf of filler so it so if you want more smokiness you're going to go for the fire cured with a smaller ring gauge if you want less you know kind of like the difference between drinking your your scotch neat or on the rocks if, if you want it like if you're drinking it on the rocks you want to get a you know the fatter uh, fire cured because we just add more Nicaraguan filler in that cigar. We don't add more uh, Kentucky fire cured. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, all right, before I get to my next question, we're going to take a quick break for one of our sponsors. Uh, we'll right. be right back. Brought to you by Gurkha Cigars. Gurkha Cigars, makers of the world's finest cigars. Try the 93 rated Heritage featuring Rosado, Ecuador, and Habana wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and Dominican, Pennsylvanian, and Nicaraguan fillers. Blended by Gurkha's blending team at American Caribbean Cigars, it's hand rolled Nicaraguan available in 35 count boxes. Talk to your local BM about the Heritage today, or talk to them about other fine Gurkha cigars. Whatever your taste preference is, Gurkha has a cigar that's right for you. And we're back. Uh, we're here talking to Fabian from Drew Estate, uh, talking kind of all things non-traditional. That's so, right. So um, the next question is actually a, uh, a viewer question from Bob the Cigar Guy. Okay. Uh, he's, he says it's a nerdy question, which that's kind of our wheelhouse here at Cigar Federation. We're all cigar nerds. Um, Put me on the says, spot, huh? Uh, I, I don't know if I don't know how on the spot this question is going to be, but we'll see. Okay. He says with the Swamp series, yep. uh, having a Candela wrapper, it's usually thinner by nature, and with cooler weather coming, do you think he should keep them in a lower humidity humidor uh, to combat kind of cracking when it, you know, when you get it out in that cold, dry air? You, you, you know. Uh... That is a very good question, and I don't necessarily know the answer because we came up with a swamp thing in the Swamp Rat, and we <laughs> released them in March. Yeah, so, so they haven't so lived through a winter yet. They haven't lived <laughs> through a winter yet. You know, the the swamp ha the swamp hasn't been drained, and it hasn't the the swamp hasn't been you know uh, uh, looked upon as far as as humidity and all that stuff. I would say, you know, you, you keep your cigars however you want to keep your cigars. You, you know, it's 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 personal choice. Uh, you, the last couple of years, I was doing uh, events and, and I was talking about cigars all over Europe. And I witnessed that Europe actually keeps their, their cigars at like 80% humidity. And they just... Oh, really? Love, oh, yeah. They love smoking sponges over there. It's crazy. <laughs> But, uh, oh. it, you know, and, and when I show up with my cigars, my ligas and my, my naturals and all that, and they're, they're like, well, what is this dry piece of stuff? I'm like, well, no, this, this is how we smoke here, you know? So, so, so it just, it just all depends. Uh, um, but it does make sense because a candela is a thinner wrapper. So a thinner leaf. So yeah, go for it. And actually, Bob, you, you should, you should be the, uh, uh the guinea pig and, and test that out. And, and if you, you know, uh, uh let us know, let us know. Uh, and uh, and so I'm smoking the Fat Bottom Betty, as you mentioned before. Yes. I want to know a little bit about the blend on here. This is a broadleaf wrapper, is that right? Okay, so it's a, it's a Maduro wrapper, uh, and it's a, it tends to be uh, uh, from Brazil. So it's a Brazilian oh, okay. Brazilian Maduro. And and what that is 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 it, it's a line extension off the natural. Uh, and to be to be exact, it's a the dirt blend. So, so the dirt blend, the, the actual dirt is a four by 43. Um, and, mm -hmm. and the way Drew State came, you know, Sweet Jane, Fat Bottom Betty and Crazy Alice came up is, came up is, is simple. The, I was at Sturges with Vaughn from, from uh, uh, Deadwood Tobacco and we were selling a whole bunch of cigars to bike rally guys, to bikers. And we sat down after once the the rally was over in 2006, and we're like, you know, it would be cool if we made a cigar uh, for you, and you know, uh, an exclusive cigar only for Deadwood. 
And but at that time, Drew Estate was still very small, and, and I knew it would be easier to take an existing blend and just tweak the size rather than yeah. come up with a brand new blend and, and you know, whatever. So, so Vaughn's like, yeah, great. What's your favorite blend? And I'm like, well, they don't call me Dirty Fabian for nothing. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm chain smoking these darts here. So, so let's use the dirt blend and that's easy for me to sell. So, so, so we came up with it. We made a true Corona size, uh, with, which is a five by 46 in, in 2007, Sweet Jane came out. And uh, start rocking the rocking and rolling with in Sturges and 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 that. In two thousand nine, uh, uh, Sweet Jane had an older sister, and and we wanted a bigger cigar. People were asking for a bigger cigar, and and that's where Fat Bottom Betty cr- uh, came. Again, mm-hmm. exact same blend, uh, just a five by fifty four. So so now you have a Corona size, and you have a, a Fat Robusto size. Well, in in the whole whole portfolio of of Drew Estate. My the favorite size that we make, and we make over two hundred different SKUs, two to hundred different sizes and blends and all that yeah. stuff. I mean, we're mad scientists over there. Uh, my favorite size is actually the nasty size, which is a, a your prototypical pyramid. I mean, it's a uh, I believe it's a thirty two at the mouth and a fifty two at the foot. And uh, four years ago, we used that dirt blend, and we Crazy Alice was born. So so Crazy Alice is actually that pyramid size. Uh, uh, Fat Bottom Betty is the uh, you know big robusto, and Sweet Jane is a Corona. Now, for the for some of you guys who've tried all three, you're gonna, you know the first thing you're going to say is, well, yeah, but they kind of taste different. Well, they're exactly different. You know, different sizes, you get different different blends. But the biggest difference is the size of the head. Um, the the Fat Bottom Betty is going to be the sweetest because the, the the size of the head is the biggest, so there's more mm-hmm. chance for sugar. Whereas the Alice is going to be the least sweet because the size of the head is the smallest. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Jason, I'm going to let you ask a question because I've been hogging all the questions here. All right. So I was thinking a good one for a lot of our audience would be people that are familiar with the more traditional side of Drew Estate products but want to venture over into the non-traditional side. What would you recommend as a path into that? Okay, so... First of all, I, you know, I want to thank all the people for smoking all those ligas and undercrowns, and and hopefully they're getting their hands on those sun growns that that are hitting the market uh, um, all over the place. Um, if you're if you're like I you know I briefly said earlier is if if you want to venture into the acid uh, you know area, it, you really have to take your whole cigar knowledge and you throw it out the window because it, it is completely different. With that said, uh, um, the two the two acids I would point you towards. Number one is would be the acid toast, um, and the acid toast actually has the same broadleaf wrapper as the Liga Pravada, so it's a very thick, very oily leaf, and it's not one of the one of the ones that is uh, uh, too overpowering as far as sweetness and aromatic. That the the mistake that a lot of people do is. Well, Cuba Cuba, which which is is this one right here, the, the Cuba Cuba is is our number one selling skew, right? It's a five by fifty four, but the Cuba Cuba is the sweetest and the most aromatic. And and you know, the, I use the analogy of if you want to learn how to jump off a, a ten story building, you better learn how to jump off first story first, you know, because because yeah. <laughs> you're you're not going to land too well if you don't know how to land after the first story. So so that's why I would point you towards the toast. The the other one, funny enough, is is a newer one, and it comes in two sizes, which is the the Cuba Candela, and then also the the Blondie, the Blondie Candela. I would point you, I would point you that way. If you can't find the the acid toast, I would point you towards those two Candelas. And and the reason being is is that cigar really is two wrongs be coming together and making it right. And what I mean by that is, in all practical purposes, yeah, I mean, look, this is almost like. Uh, um, any freeze green, you know. I mean, it's yeah. it's very it's very it's very bright. So, in all practical practical purposes, that candela wrapper, you get some bitterness. Uh, a lot of people equate that to like drinking tonic water, you know. So, so, so it's it's that. So it kind of scares a lot of people. And and when we take the the infusion of the blue line, which is the sweetest and the most aromatic, that the candela that bitterness actually absorbs the sweetness and the aromatic, and at the same time, the sweetness and the aromatic absorbs that bitterness, and what you end up getting. Is something that is sweet, of course, but uh, 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 extremely, extremely smooth. Now, another completely different way to go is if you are a coffee lover, 
and you want to try something in infused cigar, I would say definitely grab a Tabaca Special Negra because you are going to get a little bit of sweetness, but you are going to get that coffee flavor. Now, the last thing I want, uh, the last thing I want to say, and, and I've done over 1,500 events, right, in the last 17 years, and I've talked to, you know, quite a few people, and, and this is just, just my, my knowledge of talking to people. No, no, matter, no matter what non-traditional cigar, and when, when, when I say that, all of them except for Kentucky Fire Curd, because Kentucky Fire Curd is not sweet, but when, when you're talking about acid, natural, or Laritan, Ambrosia, and, and Tobacco Special, if you are a, a long-time cigar smoker, a very traditional cigar smoker, no matter which acid or, or Laritan you pick, you are going to get sweet. Even if you take the one that is the least sweet, you're going to think that that cigar is so sweet. Now, why? The question is why. And, and, and this is what I came up with. And, and I'm not a scientist. I just play one in the cigar industry. You know, so, so this, this is my hypothesis or, or this is, this is my, what I, I, I came up with is because the second that you put that cigar in your mouth, the, the sweetness is on the head. So, so that sweetness gets on your lips and in, in, in your mouth. And you know sweet, but you also know because you smoked a lot of traditional cigars that cigars aren't supposed to be sweet. So, mm-hmm. so the sweetness alerts like go off in your head, in your subconsciousness. And as you're smoking, all, you, all in your head you can focus is sweet. And, and I promise all you guys out there, and, and if you think I'm wrong, come and find me at one of my events and, and, and you know, tell me I'm wrong. And, and I'm all over the place, so it's not like I, I, I'm, I'm shying away from all you guys. I'm all over the place all the time. If you keep going and keep smoking that infused cigar, what will happen over time is your head, your subconsciousness will stop focusing on the sweetness and will allow the sweetness to be part of the cigar instead of working against the cigar. So personally, what I do, um, like th- that's the big thing for me with, you know, all of those infused cigars that you mentioned is the sweetness. Yeah. I can't, yep. they're just overpoweringly sweet for me. I clip mm-hmm. it and I chew on it for half an hour before I light it. And it ends up not eliminating the sweetness, but cutting it enough that I don't, you know, it's not yeah. taking over my palate anymore. Um, there you go. And there I mean, go. we were talking about the green a little bit before the show. And I'm, I'm just so impressed by how balanced that cigar comes out. Um, mm-hmm. I, I didn't realize that it actually had the same infusion process as the Cuba Cuba. I thought it was it probably is. a couple steps down from there. Um, and like a testament to how good that cigar actually is, is at the Drew Estate event at IPCPR, uh, another blogger lit one. Uh-huh. And I was like, dude, you're smoking that already? <laughs> and And he was like an inch in. He's like, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> and we had like five or six bloggers sitting around a table. All of us were smoking the Kuba Kuba Green, and nobody had anything bad to say about it. I was pushing those things at the show, man. I was pushing those things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, they're it's Candela's just never good to look at. It doesn't look great on a shelf. It's hard to market because you see it, and your body says, "Don't put that in your mouth." Yeah, it's it's an oxymoron. Yeah, exactly, but. Yeah. You guys pulled it off with that one. I think it worked really well, and I smoked the the Blondie Candela today, and was also pretty impressed by that one. Nice. Well, you know, uh, uh, our, we have a phenomenal blending team. Willie Herrera, who leads the blending team in Nicaragua. I mean, they know their stuff and whatnot. And 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 for as much as what the Candela did for the acid line, the Candela is doing a, a nice thing on the Swamp Rat and Swamp Thing because. That's bringing awareness back to that line too, and and like your first question was about that gentleman, you know, how to store those in in the winter months. Uh, a lot of people are actually the swamp thing and swamp rat are actually outselling the, the Kentucky Fire Cured right now because, you know, it's an acquired taste. That smokiness is an acquired taste. Yeah, and and, and you, again, the the candela kind of offsets that smokiness a yep, little bit. That's right. For me, the, right. like that smokiness, I love like a Delphinus or a Kyoto's. When I'm yeah. like smoking pork on the grill and I'm sitting yeah. out there and the smoke is in my face anyway and smoke one of those goes so well with it. Yep. All right. Yeah. We got to take our second station break here. We will be right back after this message. This show is sponsored by Cigar Oasis. Don't spend all your time worrying about your cigar wrappers cracking, splitting or falling apart from humidity fluctuation issues. Set it and forget it by choosing Cigar Oasis, a professional solution which provides equal distribution of humidity with precise electronic controls. Monitor your cigars through the internet using the smart humidor Wi-Fi attachment. 
Why don't you spend all your time enjoying your cigars and relaxing and let Cigar Oasis protect your cigars? Cigar Oasis has solutions for any humidor. Make sure you set it and forget it today. Of course. All right, and we're back. Um, we're, we're, of course, talking to Dirty Fabian from Drew Estate. Uh, if you're watching live, you better get your questions in because you can win some, some Drew Estate swag. Uh, and right. you, nobody wants to miss out on Drew Estate swag. If you don't weasel it, I will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go, Jason. It sounds like you're going to have a whole stack of hats and ashtrays, man. <laughs> All right, Jason, do you have any other uh, quick questions for Fabian before I, I start going again? So another thing I wanted to touch on um, relating to the um, Kentucky Fire Cured is can you give us um, a little bit of information about the Kentucky Barn Smoker that you guys do? Oh, there we go. Oh, well, it's actually this Saturday. So, uh, uh, you know, after I get off this, the, this Skype session over here, I got a pack because I leave for Kentucky tomorrow. And, and this is the fifth annual. The, uh, the very first barn smoker we started doing was a Kentucky one, and this is the fifth, the fifth one. So we're, we sold out. It's 400, I think it's 470 tickets or, or whatever. Uh, um, and what it is, it's, it's we're bringing people uh, uh, to the fields in Kentucky, and we're we're kind of uh, talking to them about fire curing. Um, it was an idea of of Sam Morales and Jonathan uh, because you know we, we're a lot of people talk about cigar safari and they have a great time when they go down to, to our factory, but not everyone can get four days off and you know you spend thousand dollar and go down there and this and that whatever. So we're we're trying to bring in that knowledge. Uh, um, into the U.S. Uh, and this year is actually our, our, we have four barn smokers. We started in Florida and then we did Connecticut. We have Kentucky uh, on Sunday and then we have the Louisiana barn smoker November 4th. Um, and again, it's, it's uh, uh, you go in there, you get a bag of cigars with, with your ticket price and you get lunch, it's barbecue. And you, you are told uh, uh, from Jonathan and Willie and Pedro uh, at different stations on uh, how to, cigars are made. And, and it's, you know, a lot of people go there to have a good time. And, and it's just knowledge. And, and, and the Kentucky one is very different because we're actually in the fire cured barn. So, so you know, the stuff that you're, you wear, you tend to throw away afterwards because, <laughs> you, you're, you know, unless you like that smoked meat, that, that fire cured smell. Uh, um, you know, you're, you're spending, a, you, you might have to buy some tomato juice to, to wash your hair after that. Cause it's going to be very smoky. It'll, it'll smell like you just smoked a KFC uh, or, or only, like only 10 for of them, days. <laughs> yeah. 10 of them at one time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I was at the Connecticut barn smoker. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're within driving distance of any of the barn smokers, you have to try to get a ticket. It's, I mean, it's part like mini safari where you're learning yep. about the processes, uh, which, I mean, if you haven't seen like the process of making cigars or growing tobacco or curing tobacco firsthand, it's hard to appreciate how much work really goes into each and every cigar. It's an exhausting amount of work and so many people are involved with the process and it's just, it kind of gives you an appreciation to see it. Um, but then it's also just like a cool giant herf. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, people people go out there and they, they become friends and, and whatnot. And I mean, at the, at the uh, Connecticut one, we had a guy from Winnipeg. It took mm -hmm. him seven, 17 hours to get there because uh, uh, he missed a connection and this and that, whatever. We had a guy from Hawaii. So, you know, he, he yeah. flew and, you know, I mean, we had a bunch of people from Philadelphia and all, all over the place. So, yeah, I mean, uh, in, in uh, the Kentucky one, there's a couple people from Chicago that are coming to the Kentucky one. So, yeah, I mean, they're coming from all over the place. Uh, uh, tickets go tickets go fairly fairly quick. Uh, the one that that goes the fastest is the Connecticut one because I mean I think what the the, the ticket price is seventy five seventy five dollars I believe. But I you think get it was ninety this year or or ninety dollars. But, the, but the, still, the, you're the getting bag, the bag cigars. of cigars that you get. You get ten cigars and it's ten cigars focused in that region. So you can imagine. It's ten, you know, Liga esque or, or broadleaf uh, 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 cigars, so it's well worth the ticket price. And and let me be the first one to tell you, we, we we're not making any money off, off <laughs> uh, uh, the barn smokers, uh, uh, but we're having a good time because all that money, all that ticket money, actually goes to uh, cigars for warriors. 
So, so uh, um, you, you know, there were big partners with Cigars for Warriors, and, and unfortunately, the FDA has changed some laws where yeah. we used to give out 2,000 cigars a month for, for the troops, and now we can't do that because we're looked upon as pushers or whatever. But so, so that's why it's very important that we do these barn smokers because all the money we have raffles and all that money goes towards cigar for, Cigars for Warriors. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. Um, I'm trying to remember. There's so many different topics to talk about. So actually, I want to ask an acid question. Yeah. So for people who don't like the sweetened tips, which acids are the least sweet? And has yeah. there ever been any thought about making an acid that's not sweetened? So, so there is one acid that is not sweet, and that is the acid liquid. So it's in the red. It's in the red line, and that's botanical. So it's botanical oils. All natural botanical oils, oils uh, Connecticut wrapper, and Nicaraguan filler, um, and the again, just like if you like, you're looking for an ambrosia. The liquid is the one that sells the least out of all the acids. <laughs> so if you want to find one, you know, uh, put on your uh, Indiana Jones hat because uh, uh, it might be a thing. You, you might be traveling somewhere. But what what it is 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 the 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 cigar that you start getting tobacco flavor with the infusion so so you're so so it would be like the the if someone smokes acid for a long time you know they'll, they'll probably find their way to a blondie or cuba and eventually mm -hmm. they'll want to try something traditional so before they go full traditional they might smoke a, a liquid to see okay so this is what tobacco actually tastes like <laughs> okay. you know, we all we all grew up not knowing what tobacco tastes like we know what tobacco tastes like by smoking more cigars yeah, uh, um, you know we know what sweet tastes like, and, and that's why acid is is doing real well because of that sweetness and and and, and whatnot. But yeah, it's it, it is the the gateway to the traditional from the acid line. Okay, that's good to know. Yep. Jason, do you have any questions? Um, so for the um, are the tabac especials are are those sweet tipped as well, or are those just infused? Okay, so they're both they're both infused and sweetened. Um, the the dulce, which is the lighter wrapper, uh, because of the Connecticut uh, wrapper that we use, that tastes sweeter because it's a lighter wrapper. So so the sweetness doesn't dissipate. Whereas the Maduro or the Negra is a thick uh, uh, a Brazilian wrapper. So so that that sweetness tends to dis dissipate. It's the same. It's the same amount of sweetness. It's just the 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 strength on the on the negra or the maduro is a little bit stronger so so that overpowers the sweetness okay yep okay um and we're just gonna oh actually i was i was gonna try to hit the button for our last commercial break um but the commercial is actually kind of out of date it's a drew estate commercial though um, ah, so there you go <laughs> you know smoke some drew estate cigars they're great cigars whether you're smoking acid liga undercrown whatever Whatever like floats your boat, they've got something in your uh, in your wheelhouse for sure. That's yeah, that's that's the best thing, you know. I mean, if, if you open up a cigar store and and you know, there's there's different categories that you want. You definitely want mild and sweet. You want mild, you want medium, and you want strong, right? If, I can't really. I mean, there's very few other manufacturers that you can go into their booth at the IPCPR and fulfill all those categories like very well with not just one skew but many different skews i mean you know the mild and sweet we got acid ambrosia tobacco natural all that stuff but the full i mean you know we got those hoya those those powerhouses we're, we're the distributor mm -hmm. for hoya and and you know i mean the the that brand new grand reserva that just came out that's that's a phenomenal stick so so in, in everything in, in between we have the the new sun grown like i said liga you know i mean uh so we definitely have a cigar for everybody. Um, and so I'm trying to remember the name of, there's a couple of like acid cigars that have kind of like a legendary status where people are always clamoring to get them. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to remember what the name, the name was. I think one of them was the one. Was well, that the one that was like, or no, no, the acid one we make. It's a, it, it was the original torpedo in the acid line, and, and it's the one that's infused with uh, Central American wines and Nicaraguan sangria. Oh, uh, okay. So, so, so it wasn't so that was, one. There was some. There was some acid that I was reading about a few weeks ago that was like 
people are like hunting for them because they haven't been made in a few years. Well, it could be the Acid Five. So oh, that's so, probably what it was. So the Acid Five is you know we because um, we don't like to waste anything. So so as the as the legend goes, I, I can neither confirm or deny this legend because I wasn't in the room, but there was a little bit of, you know, we use a, a, um, a whole bunch of different natural botanical and herbal oils, and uh, we are closing, we are cl closing the factory f uh, uh, for, a, for, for December one year, and we had a little bit of everything. So one of the guys says, hey, what do you want us to do with all these little things? So, so someone said, oh, just put them all, all in one vat, and let's just infuse a, 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 a group of cigars. So we used all 147, diff 147 different botanical and herbal oils, and, and we created the Acid 5, which had a run uh, uh, for a couple years. Uh, we had the, the – there's a, a Connecticut Acid 5, and there's also a Maduro Acid 5. The Connecticut came in two sizes, and the Maduro came in, in three sizes. And, I mean, it's been, I think, six years since, since you know, the last – the last box was sold. So yeah. I mean, okay. That's happy. definitely the one that I was reading about then. Yeah. Yep. Uh, people are crazy for those. Uh, but, but I mean, <laughs> that's kind of like the, uh, the, I don't know. I don't know the word for it. The upper echelon of the acid fans. They're yes. crazy about everything acid. Just yeah. crazy about it. Well, um, ever since we, ever since we released that Drew Diplomat app, which, you know, uh, yeah. um, so you have the app on the phone and, and to get your badges, you have to smoke all of them. So, and in the acid line, there's like six, seven, eight, eight of them that were discontinued in 2003. You know, so so good luck finding those. So I don't <laughs> think anyone's ever going to get that that acid badge. But but it's it's fun. I I was in Philadelphia in in August, and I actually ran into a box of acid patients, and and I thought wow. I sold the last box of acid patients, you know, in California in 2002. Uh, but I, I ran into that and, and I snagged it. The guy didn't know what he had. And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't mind buying it full price. This is not whatever. I, I, you know, I'm good. Now, <laughs> I'm, I made a mistake because I started passing them out. And next thing you know, I had one left in my <laughs> in the box. In uh. the box. Yeah. So I, I only enjoyed it once. So, you know, there's 13 other guys. I enjoyed it uh, uh, just as much as I did. But, yeah, it's it's fun to go around in some of these stores and, and they don't necessarily know what they have. You, you know, I mean. For instance, I was in a store in Michigan, and they had some Acid Fives. And when I was telling two people about what the Acid Five was, they, they ended up arm wrestling to see who, who could buy the, the, the last 11 of them. You know, so it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. It's diehards. You know, it's, it's, it's a yeah, diehard. That's, a, that's the word for it, diehard. You have, there are absolutely diehard Acid fans out there. Yep, yep. Um, and so you're wearing the hat. You just threw your, your hat your, oh uh, yes! Your proverbial hat into the podcast ring recently. That's right. That's um, right. I've been listening it, to that. It's good. I like it. What do you think? I it's good. I I really enjoy like uh, it's interesting because obviously it's a it's sort of a marketing thing for a manufacturer, but yeah. it doesn't sound that way. I mean, it's it's just an interesting podcast that you do with interesting people and talk about interesting things. So so here so here's the thing right so uh, on that same trip in in Philadelphia um, there's there's a guy uh, my rep actually signed me up to do to go on a podcast and I did a podcast and it was a thirty minute podcast uh, it was like I think it, it's called like three men in a lounge or something uh, um, and after thirty minutes we, we kept going and and the thing ended up being an hour and seven minutes and they're like wow man you could speak you, can, you have stories I'm like well that was just the first two years of me in the industry you know so yeah so 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 the guy's like you should have your own podcast and and flying back from Philadelphia I'm like you know what I should have my own podcast but but my podcast and and you know so I spoke to Sam and and Joe and and I told him that what I want to focus on. Manif like you said, manufacturers can talk about, hey, you know, this, this, this is the wrapper, this is the binder, yeah. this is the filler, and you have those people who actually want to have know that information, but that information is out there on the website, right? Yeah, if you can I'm just look for it. Yeah, exactly. On the podcast, again, it's very non-traditional. I'm the very non-traditional <laughs> guy, uh, uh, so so it just falls into it. So let's talk about other things. Let's. Let's talk about you know uh, like the the last one I was with was with Pedro Gomez yeah. and and we talked about how he got his name right so so just randomness 
And and I've gotten a lot of feedback of of people are just like, man, this is just fun, and it puts a smile on my face when I listen to it and and whatnot. And that's and that's what I want, you know. I mean, less information and more about, hey, we're a bunch of guys, we're we're smoking dried up, rolled up leaves. Let's have a good time for a half hour, forty five minutes, and and share a couple stories. And you know, it, it's you know, get out of the real world for a little bit, and that's that's what the podcast is. So. So from 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 the focus on is is I'm going to be using the podcast and I'm going to be doing it uh, in stores. So 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 that's oh okay is, that'll be really interesting. Yeah, once we go through all you know, Willie Herrera is going to be on one and and whatnot, and and I'm like I'm doing another I'm doing a podcast from the Kentucky Barn Smoker. So so what I want is I want the Drew State fan to have a voice and to share with other fans you know what they do, what they like, and 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 whatnot. So it's it's all about having a good time and yeah okay all right so the first two minutes i'll tell you that you know it's a five by 54 and whatnot and it's a medium to full but the rest of the time is 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 all fun and i like i like that last segment which is the uh, pucked up segment you yeah know? I, i've been known to swear a lot and so i'm trying to say puck instead of the f word which is you know a <laughs> a uh, 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 a little bit easier and 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 because we are drew state we have jesse and, and that crew at subculture studios they're phenomenal guys um, yeah. We got pucks, and we're going to give a puck out to the best question of the of the of the show. You know, I mean, it's it, it just another way of having people interact with you. You know, that's that's what we're about. Yeah, it's really, uh, I don't know. It's just it. Drew Estate's got kind of its own style uh, yeah. throughout everything that it does. One of the things is like just the personalities. Everybody there is friendly. Yeah, uh, I mean, I know, I know half of the people who work in like in probably every Drew State office, whether it's at the factory or in Miami, uh-huh. um, and you know, they're it's just good people. Drew State is all good people. We, we don't take ourselves too seriously, man. You yeah, know, I guess I'm, that's part of it. <laughs> that's the key. No, no. Nobody at Drew Estate takes themselves too seriously. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I think that's the the third rule in our handbook. Yeah, so it's 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 good, and and hopefully one of these times, you know, uh, um, I can get you on the podcast. I, I so, would I would be okay with that. I so can do so that. you know, we'll we'll wrap and we'll talk about stuff and and just just wait till the the, the quality of questions that I'm going to throw at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I haven't talked to you since we talked in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess I talked to you a little bit at the Connecticut Barn Smoker, but. Uh, yeah. What was the uh, what was the like the best food you had in Vegas, and what was the like most interesting weird thing that happened? Because weird stuff always happens in Vegas. All right, so so here's the thing with Vegas, right? I love the IPCPR in Vegas because I I uh, uh, know all the little spots and whatnot, and I'm a creature of habit, so I go to um, the the same restaurants all the time, and and I showed up to my favorite restaurant. Uh, and it was closed, and I'm like, man, Aww. I I love the Tepon. I love Tepon restaurants. Uh, they just cook it. They just have a show and this and that, whatever. And the funniest thing is actually uh, uh, there. So we ended up going to the Tepon restaurant, which I forgot what the name is, but it's it's at the Win. And and I went there with with Debonair Phil Phil Zang. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Willie Herrera and, and Giselle and, and my girlfriend and Jared, uh, uh, who is the, uh, the the ambassador for Indian debonair cigars, mm-hmm. and and the interaction of Phil with the cook or the chef is like was the funniest thing. First of all, for you guys, Phil is not that tall, right? So so whether oh, yeah. he was whether he was sitting or standing at the table, he was the same height. Okay, <laughs> so I, I swear he was standing half the half the time. And, and then when when the when the chef actually does you know just like Benny Hanna or any other place they they create that that volcano of onion and then they 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 make it you know the lava or whatever. Well, this guy turns to turns to Phil and goes, "Hey, this is your favorite mountain." And Phil's like, "Oh yeah, what?" He's like, "It's Brokeback Mountain, bitch." <laughs> and, and I mean, it, is the, it was the funniest thing. And for for a brief moment, Phil was speechless. So, so, wow. So, yeah, that's yeah. a big deal. <laughs> so that that was that was the funniest, you know, that was the funniest thing. Now, as far as food, man, I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a simple guy, yeah, you know, Tepon, but I I love going to the build your own hamburger places and just and just come up with crazy blends. And you know, I mean, right now I'm on this like cinnamon 
uh, powdered bacon. Uh, 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 so, so the cinnamon, really? ba- oh, the cinnamon bacon on this on the cheeseburger with a fried egg. Oh man, don't forget forget about it. Especially if you add brie cheese. It's like stuff that shouldn't even be on the same plate. And man, it's, brie cheese wait, is good on anything, man. It, dude, it, it, it's like it's like the acid candela. I created the <laughs> acid candela burger. You know, that's that's what it was. It was a bunch of things that don't make sense, but it was very tasty. Uh, that that reminds me of we have a burger place here called Killer Burger. Uh, Jason's actually in the same city that I'm in. Um, oh, yeah. They make the peanut, the PBPB, peanut butter. Yep. Uh, what is what is the other P for? Peanut butter, pickles, and bacon on yep. a burger. Ah, well, that uh, sounds interesting. Oh, it's so good. It's though. really good. It's well, it's uh, less like peanut butter and more like a like Thai peanut sauce. But it's still, kind of a sauce it's, it's made amazing. of peanut butter. But all right, all right. Well, you know that I might have to go try that when I'm uh, in your neck of the woods. Yeah, n- next time you're out out in Portland, okay. go to Killer Burger I, and get a. You know, it's actually funny because I'm working on my first, the first two months, or the I'm working on my schedule for for next year. So I have my schedule ready for for January all the way up to the IPCPR, and I have a week in Portland, Seattle. Uh, um, right. I believe I believe it's in May, uh, um, but what I'll do is uh, uh, I'll get you the specific dates, and and I'd love to uh, meet up you guys and get a the the was it the yeah. PP. The, the peanut the, butter pickle burger. Yeah, the yeah. Pick, peanut butter pickle burger. That's it. It's on me. That's a fun right. place. Okay. They have crazy fries or what? They just have normal fries, but just they're good. Fries. All right. Um, I'm trying. I had a question that was queued up, and we started talking about burgers, and I lost it. Uh, <laughs> Jason, do you have a question? Um, so... As far as like when when you're traveling doing these events and stuff, do you have yeah. kind of like a go to food that you like to to get? That's maybe like a chain or something reliable that you can so, find. So here's like here, here's here's question. the thing, right? So so the meal before an event is always safe. So it's always like at a at, at a at a chain. So you know uh, it used to be Cheesecake Factory, but now it's PF Chang's. Uh, um, and, and whatnot. So it's, it's always safe because the last thing you want is stomach problems when you're in the middle of an event, <laughs> when you're so at an I, event for five and a half hours, exactly. Selling cigars. <laughs> exactly. So the meal before the event is always the safe. Now, after the event, that's when I start, you know, I, I during the event, I'm looking for those big fat dudes. that enjoy cigars and I'm go, yo, you didn't get your size eating salads, man. Where did where do you eat? Are you local? <laughs> yeah. and, and that's where I get like the little hole in the walls, little ma and pa restaurants, and and it, it, it could be anything from you know Greek to Italian to Thai to pho to whatever. Uh, um, that's that's uh, 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 what I usually do. Now, if it's in a state that has like these Mongolian grills, like like uh, Genghis Grill, or in Chicago area, it's flat top. I love that stuff. I could eat that oh, yeah. three, two or three meals a day because. You have so many choices, and you create your own choices. And if, and at the end of the day, if if you don't like it, you only have yourself to blame because that mixture yeah. wasn't shit. So you know, I I turned I turned Jonathan into a big fan, and, and Jonathan and I travel travel the states, and when we go to those restaurants, we take pictures of our creations and and we send it to each other, and we're like, yeah, my my, my mix is legit. So so that's that's our little saying. So yeah, Mongolian restaurants definitely, but it's not the ones with the frozen. Uh, um, protein chips. It's it's the ones with the the the, the you know the, the the different meats and and all that stuff that aren't frozen. So because there oh, are yeah. some there are some all, all the up. ones that I've been to are like shaved frozen meat. Oh yeah, no, you, you got to go. It's it, it either be like there's there's BD's Mongolian restaurant or there's Ho Huts or or the best the best one is actually in um, in Chicago. There's like four or five of them. It's called Flat Top. And and flat top is phenomenal because you you can create your your mixture and you can have it in faux you can have it uh, um, with wraps you can you can have it four or five different ways so so yeah. that's I'm gonna have to go there next time I'm in Chicago flat top grill flat top grill all right and uh, we're reaching the end of our armed forces radio segment here um, where can people uh, reach you follow you on social media stuff like that. Okay, so so on Instagram, I'm uh, uh, smoke what Fabian smokes, and uh, me being born in Switzerland in the French part of, of Switzerland, uh, Fabian is F A B I E N, not F A B I A N like everyone from Central America and, and Spain. 
So it's Smoke What Fabian Smokes uh, uh, on on Twitter and on uh, Facebook. I'm Fabian Ziegler. Uh, so, you know, uh, you can find me there. Actually, on, on, on Twitter, I'm Dirty Fabian. So Dirty Fabian on Twitter, Smoke What Fabian Smokes on uh, Instagram and Fabian Ziegler uh, uh, with my name on Facebook. And, and one of the best ways to reach us is uh, uh, by emailing us, uh, uh, actually emailing the podcast, which is podcast at drewestate.com. Uh, listen to the podcast, DE for Live, and, and email us with our, or your questions and whatnot, and whether you want to, you know, questions about anything or you want questions to be used on the podcast. The best way to reach us is, is podcast at drewestate.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Fabian. Uh, uh, the pleasure thank is all you. mine. The pleasure was all mine, man. <laughs> uh, it was just a fun show. I just like, you know, I like talking to you. You're a fun guy to talk to. <laughs> well, thank um, you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you to all of our live viewers, all of our podcast listeners, and uh, everyone that's listening on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thank you for your service. Uh, you're out there doing things to protect our freedoms, uh, and we really appreciate that. Uh, have a, a great and safe weekend, everybody. Hopefully you have time for a, an acid cigar or a KFC uh, or something else from the non-traditional side of Drew Estate. Exactly. Make non-traditional traditional. <laughs> <laughs>